Okay, so now we're going to look at target tracking in more detail. We have our move. We have enabled our axes. We have enabled our focus axis. We have target tracking turned on. And we have target measurements. So I can now go back to roll level. And I can shoot my move. And the camera continues to look at the target. It's noticeable that our focus goes soft in the middle. That's because at the moment our focus is an independent axis and is following spline curves. Probably with fairings. Let's have a look at our graphics. Our focus axis is following a fairing to move. In order for target tracking to work at all, we have to have a kinematics model. This kinematics model defines the shape of the machine. Each of these measurements is a measurement between different bearing surfaces and knuckles of the machine. I have a height, another height, I have the way my camera is mounted, I have the offsets and the measurements and the lengths, as well as each of the definitions of what each axis does to the camera. This depends upon the zero position. The kinematics measurements are all done at a home position. The home position for this rig, go to home, is there. The home position is defined for this rig so that I can take this job and I can save it as tracking job and the tracking job, all these measurements are referenced with respect to a home position. If I come back in six months' time and take the rig to the home position and then load in tracking job, I will have the same move and I will be able to go to my start position and shoot it again and it is the same move. This way, because I have a standard home position, I have a standard place that all other measurements are referenced from and a kinematics file which is constant because it is measured from the physical universe rig itself. I can guarantee that each job becomes a repeatable thing whether I repeat it in five minutes time or six months time. Another function which I can use in order to make target tracking more useful because I have a target distance there, if I had my focus axis not be merely an independent axis, but if my focus axis could follow my target, then, in theory, my target would stay in focus. 
If I right click on the number, on the name, and go to focus follows target, I have here a measurement. That measurement is where the focus axis thinks it is with regard to centimeter measurements of focus. As you can see, this job has a target distance of 195 to 80 and a focus distance now of 195 to 80. So therefore, I should be able to back run by going back run and have my focus axis go to the end position so that I can shoot it backwards. This means now that I can run my job and have it maintain focus throughout the move. Again, this relies upon my focus axis having a correctly set zero position which I will know to use in six months' time if I have to shoot the job again and relies on my focus axis having been calibrated exactly in order to be able to do focus follows target. This has been a Mark Roberts motion control training video. Thank you for watching.